back to our studies in the book of Revelation. And we're today looking at the sixth seal. So if you have your Bibles, I'd encourage you to turn to Revelation chapter 6. And we'll read starting in verse number 12. It says this, And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll, when it is rolled together. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? In our past video segments together, we've looked at the previous five seals. Uh, we looked first at the four horses, uh, each re horse representing one of the seals. And really all of those four seals together uh, representing different uh, characteristics of Antichrist regime during that seven-year tribulation period. And let's remember that the whole purpose of the tribulation is to turn national Israel back to God, to bring them to national repentance, to recognize Jesus Christ as their Messiah. And we're promised that all Israel will be saved. And then a second purpose is to usher in the millennial kingdom of Jesus Christ, where all the kingdoms of this world are subjected to Jesus Christ. And so that's the purpose. It's important for us to keep the uh, purposes of the tribulation in mind as we study the seals. And I believe these seals provide a, a skeletal outline of the entire seven-year tribulation period. Uh, we've looked, as I said, at the first six seals, the first four. Uh, those four horses, the first horse, it was a white horse. Um, in verse number two of Revelation 6, uh, John the Apostle says, And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And this white horse, I believe, represents the first three and a half years of Antichrist's reign. It talks about a bow with no arrows. I believe a reference to the fact that Antichrist will uh, woo the world, the kingdoms of this world, through flattery, through deception. He conquers through diplomacy. And we looked at that uh, in, in that first horse. And again, this uh, first horse, I believe, uh, represents the first three and a half years where uh, really it's a relatively peaceful time compared to the last three and a half years, oftentimes the, often referred to as the Great Tribulation. Well, then that second horse, let's look at the second horse. It's the red horse. And this represents warfare. This is when Antichrist um, breaks his treaty with Israel. He goes into the temple, desecrates the temple, and launches an all-out offensive against the Jewish people and against believers as well. Anyone who professes the name of Jesus Christ. And so there's just tremendous bloodshed and warfare. That's represented by the red horse. And then the third horse, it's a black horse, the third seal, and it represents uh, famine. And let's just look at it here. I heard in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. And so there's just going to be widespread famine. People will die from starvation and hunger um, and these, I believe, are the results of Antichrist policies toward Israel. The world will experience tremendous economic ruin uh, because of uh, Antichrist policies against Israel. And this is in direct fulfillment of the fact that Jesus, God said, even back in Genesis chapter 12, I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. God will fulfill His promise that those who curse Israel will 
be cursed. And so Antichrist's regime will be cut short. Um, and then we see the fourth horse, the pale horse, represented uh, by death, the widespread death. Many people, a quarter of the world's population, it says, will die, all because of Antichrist's uh, policies toward Israel. They'll be killed with the sword, they'll be killed with hunger, with death, and with the wild beasts of the earth. That's the four, first four seals. And then last uh, time together, we looked at the fifth seal. And this we just called Tribulation Martyrs. And this seal uh, actually uh, represents those who have been killed for the Word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Uh, they're believers. Uh, no doubt one to Jesus through the ministry of the 144,000 Jewish evangelists. And then we come to the sixth seal. And this seal, the timing of it, I believe, happens really right toward the very end of the tribulation period, uh, right in connection with the coming of Jesus Christ, His second coming. Um, Matthew chapter 24 talks about that. Lord willing, we'll look at that here toward uh, the end of our time together. Uh, but let's look at this sixth seal and what happens during this seal. It's a pretty uh, traumatic, climactic um, events that happen on this earth during the unfolding of this sixth seal. The first thing that happens we see is there is a great earthquake. Like that word great uh, is the Greek word megas, uh, meaning large or massive, great. The idea is this earthquake is not just going to be a local earthquake, but a global earthquake. We've seen local earthquakes China and Chile, Japan, Alaska, different parts of the world. But can you imagine at the time of this sixth seal that there will be earthquakes at a scale we've not seen to this point? Globally, this earth will literally be shaking uh, with great earthquakes. The word quake, earthquake, comes from the Greek word seismos. Uh, it's where we get uh, the whole idea of seismic activity uh, when talking about earthquakes. Uh, the Earth's crust is made up of uh, seven, primarily seven massive plates. Um, you can think of the Earth's crust kind of like a cracked eggshell. And creation scientists, men like Ken Ham, uh, Dr. Henry Morris with the Institute of Creation Research, uh, these men and others on their team be really believe that the Earth's crust was cracked at the time of the flood. Uh, back in Genesis chapter 6 through 8, the time of the flood, uh, it says that the foundations of the deep were broken up. It's believed that there was so much pressure uh, mounting beneath the earth, Earth's crust that it literally broke through and burst forth. Uh, through uh, the Earth's crust creating the global flood. Um, the edges of these plates, these massive plates, are called fault lines. And if you think about it, these plates are huge. Uh, you get an idea by just um, doing a Google search on um, these tectonic plates, uh, often they're called. Uh, but the size of them, one's called the North American Plate, uh, the South American Plate, uh, and so on. You get just a picture of the size of these plates. And there's all, often activity happening at the fault lines, at the edges of these plates as they come together. Sometimes the plates move apart. Uh, sometimes they collide. Uh, sometimes one plate will even move underneath and push up the other plate. Incidentally, mountain ranges have been formed because of plates moving, crashing together, moving under one plate, moving in a, under another plate. Um, the Himalayan mountain region, for instance, a huge uh, mountain range, uh, ranging even upwards of 29, 30,000 feet in height. Um, creation scientists believe happened during the flood with all of that earthquake um, the fountains of the deep being broken up and those plates colliding together and actually creating 
um, those tremendous mountain ranges. Obviously, ocean trenches uh, would have been um, also developed, created during that, uh, the result of the uh, global flood. All of that I give you just to help us to put in perspective this great quaking uh, that is going to be true on this earth in the end times. Um, because, think about this, because of earthquakes, uh, there's all kinds of uh, volcanic activity that is caused because of earthquakes. Um, tsunamis are a result of earthquakes. Uh, one of the largest uh, tsunamis, in fact the largest tsunami recorded in history happened uh, in Alaska. And the height of the tallest wave was 1,760 feet. It just washed away buildings, cars, trees, um, just a devastating uh, tsunami. But all of this volcanic activity, uh, this tsunamis, can you imagine the impact of literally the whole earth shaking? Uh, these tectonic uh, plates uh, just crashing into one another, moving apart, creating tremendous uh, earthquakes and, of course, the resulting volcanoes and tsunami. Um, unparalleled devastation is going to happen uh, during this sixth seal. Well, notice there's some signs in heaven. Um, not only this great earthquake, but notice also that the sun becomes black as sackcloth of hair. The sun is darkened. And this is very interesting because you think about all the uh, volcanic ash, the gases, the steam, the debris that's thrown up into the atmosphere. Um, the sun will be darkened. Um, of course, back in Bible times, sackcloth uh, was specifically used um, as clothing to represent um, deep grief or mourning, but it was made of, of either goat's hair or dark camel's hair. Uh, so the picture, of course, is the sun has become darkened because of all of the uh, debris, the ash, the um, debris from the volcanic activity caused by the earthquakes. Well, then notice not just the sun is darkened, but the moon becomes as blood. Of course, the moon is a reflection of the sun's light, so you think about this, the sun being darkened, um, the effect of that on the moon is that it's going to appear very much like a blood color, reddish, uh, copper color. And that's another of these signs that we see that will happen uh, during the sixth seal. Interestingly enough, this specific seal is prophesied several times in the Old Testament. Let's look at just a few of these passages. In Joel chapter 2, in verse number 30 and 31, it says this, I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come. And then there's several other passages in Joel, Joel chapter 2, verse 10 through 11, and Joel chapter 3, and verse 15 and 16. We won't I'll look at those, but I encourage you to uh, look at that perhaps on your own. Turn over to Haggai. It's on the screen there as well, but Haggai chapter 2, verse 6 and 7, it says this, For thus saith the Lord of hosts, Yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea, so can you imagine this, the heaven shaking, the earth shaking, the sea shaking, creating all sorts of tsunami effects, and the dry land shaking. And I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come. And I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. It's interesting to me that uh, oftentimes, these Old Testament prophecies of the sixth seal are connected directly with the second coming of Jesus Christ. In Haggai chapter 2, it says, And behold, the desire of all nations shall come. Who is this? It's talking about none other than Jesus Christ himself. And so as we think about the timing of this 
a sixth seal. It was prophesied back in the Old Testament, but it's associated with the coming, the second coming of the Son of Man. Turn over to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, we see, again, its direct connection with the second coming of Jesus Christ. It says this, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the, son of, the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. They shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And so we see this connection of the sixth seal, all the uh, volcanic activity, the earthquakes, the great shaking um, that this whole earth experiences, and then the sun being darkened, the moon being turned into blood, all of that being connected uh, really right before Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, comes. Well then let's look at the another uh, description of what happens. In verse number 13 it says, this, Notice the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her, her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. So it uses imagery of a fig tree, a great mighty wind, and literally these figs, unripened figs, fall to the earth because of they're shaken of a mighty wind. Um, perhaps when uh, you have a gumball tree, or even during the fall time when a wind comes through and it, it shakes the leaves off of the tree, or shakes those gumballs and they uh, litter your lawn. Um, that's the imagery that's used uh, of really the stars of heaven falling. They've been shaken by a mighty wind and they fall to the earth. Can you imagine that? Now, Dr. Henry Morris uh, has an interesting quote and I'll read it to you. He believes that these stars are not necessarily the stars in deep space, meteorites, um, but perhaps asteroids, so that broader definition of stars. He says this, The word star refers to any luminous body in the sky other than the sun and the moon. Obviously the stars here are not the distant stellar objects uh, that we today call stars, but the language of the text seems to know more than meteorites commonly called today falling stars. The most likely identification of these particular falling stars is that of a great swarm of asteroids that pummel the earth. Such an encounter is a real possibility. It might even be the trigger that will set off the global earthquake. So he sees this as a swarm of asteroids that pummel the earth, perhaps even triggering this global earthquake. Well, then notice not just the stars of heaven falling to the earth, but notice number 14, verse 14, the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. What is he talking about here? The heavens departing as a scroll as when it is rolled together. I believe this certainly could have a, a natural phenomena uh, to it, but I believe also there's very likely a supernatural implication that's here. And there's a couple verses in Isaiah that gives us um, some indication that this very well may be the case. Isaiah chapter 34 says this, For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations, and his fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them, he hath delivered them to the slaughter. Their slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses. And the mountains shall be melted with their blood. Likely, all of this is a reference to the Battle of Armageddon uh, that Revelation 19 also talks about. Notice verse number 4. It says, And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, and all their hosts shall fall down, as the leaf falleth off from the vine, and as a fig tree from, as the falling fig from the fig tree. These signs may very well refer to God's judgment on the fallen angels. So we just read a passage here in Isaiah chapter 34 that talks about the heavens being rolled together as a scroll. Look in Isaiah chapter 24. It says this, 
And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the hosts of the high ones that are on high, and the kings of the earth upon the earth, and they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit, and shall be shut up in the prison, and after many days shall they be visited. So in Isaiah chapter 34, it talks about the heavens being rolled together as a scroll. It refers to um, the hosts of heaven. In Isaiah chapter 24, God says, I will punish the hosts of heaven. Um, so likely a reference to none other than fallen angels. God punishing the fallen angels for following Satan in his rebellion against God at the beginning of time. And so this idea of the heavens being rolled together, God is punishing um, the hosts of heaven, likely consigning them into the bottomless pit with the devil and the, his angels, where they are um, uh, kept there for a thousand years during Christ's millennial reign and then ultimately cast into the lake of fire. Um, it's certainly possible that Revelation chapter 6 and this sixth seal is talking not just about a natural phenomena, uh, but God's supernatural judgment on the supernatural realm, the fallen angels. Uh, very interesting. Um, then let's look at another description here. It's given in the last part of verse 15, 14. It says, And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. So what we see here is a change of typography on the whole earth. Uh, many creation scientists believe that the, the world uh, during the millennial reign of Christ will be a world much like the pre-flood world. And of course all of the, uh, this verse talks about the islands being removed out of their place. Uh, talks about the mountains uh, being moved as well. Um, so literally the whole topography of the earth will be leveled out um, quite a bit from what it is now. Um, and think about that. as Just as the uh, global flood, the fountains of the deep being broken up, earthquakes and tsunamis and volcanic activities creating uh, high mountain ranges and deep ocean trenches, so likewise, here in the sixth seal at the end of time, where there's actually going to be similar volcanic activities, tsunamis, earthquakes, that will reverse what happened uh, during the flood, where the uh, waters become much more shallow and the mountain ranges uh, become um, much more leveled out. All of this topography will create conditions on the earth uh, that will create a much healthier environment. Uh, think about this. Uh, geologists I believe, creation scientists believe that the earth um, during the millennial reign of Christ will have very much of a uniform uh, weather pattern, a uniform hydraulic cycle where the waters move throughout the earth. Very little to no storm activity and certainly no natural disasters uh, during uh, the millennial reign of Christ, the kingdom of, of Christ on this earth. The earth, the entire uh, earth will be changed. Um, the environments will be much more uh, conducive to people living longer lives. Um, perhaps the waters that are currently in the ocean trenches uh, today, will um, many of those will be, again, forming a water canopy above the earth that will protect us, the humankind on the earth, from uh, the radiation, the harmful radiation of the sun. And certainly um, uh, many scientists believe that the radiation of the sun does cr uh, cause uh, mutations that we see in our earth today. But all of that will be reversed. All of that uh, curse on this earth will be reversed and possibly very much due to uh, the uh, sixth seal, all of this c uh, catastrophe uh, that really reorients the globe uh, through all that is taking place. Um, the whole typography of the earth will be changed. Well then notice uh, lastly the response, the ensuing terror of people who do not believe in Jesus Christ 
What is their response? In verse number uh, 15, it says, And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, uh, hid themselves in the dens, and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us. And hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come. And who shall be able to stand? This is a phenomenal response. Notice that in the end times, as people see all of the uh, destruction, the mass destruction that is taking place through these earthquakes, uh, tsunamis, through the a volcanic activity through the signs in the heavens, the sun being darkened and the moon uh, turning to blood and stars falling to the earth and the heavens being rolled together as a scroll. As, as mankind sees all of this, they're going to no longer be humanists. They're going to recognize that this is none other than the hand of God. But what is phenomenal is that they still refuse to repent. Even though they recognize that this is the hand of God, they refuse to repent. Um, from the great ones, from uh, the highest elected officials across uh, the world, to uh, the top uh, captains, the top generals uh, in the military, um, to free men, to bond men, to every man, whether rich, or whether poor, every man uh, who does not believe in Jesus Christ will refuse to repent, even though they see that this, in fact, is the hand of God. Uh, just before we close, I want to just highlight a parallel uh, between these six seals and what Jesus prophesied in Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24 and 25, Jesus gives the Olivet Discourse. And the disciples ask him, what's going to be the sign of, sign of the end of the world? What's going to be the sign of your coming? And Jesus answers their questions. And incidentally, Jesus, um, in his uh, answering their question, uh, his prophecies parallel very closely with the six seals that we find in Revelation chapter 6. Again, we see those six seals as the skeletal outline, as it were, of um, the tribulation period. Of course, the seventh seal provides more detail. It's the opening of the seven uh, trumpet judgments and the seven bowl judgments. It gives more as it were, meat on the bones. More details, and we'll look at that. But let's look at the parallels uh, between uh, Jesus' Olivet Discourse, Matthew 24, and the six seals uh, in Revelation chapter 6. Notice the first seal is, we looked at this, it's deception, where Antichrist conquers the world through diplomacy. Jesus uh, prophesied about this, spoke of this in Matthew chapter 24, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. So Jesus prophesies of the coming of Antichrist, that many will be deceived. We could call that first seal deception. Then look at the second seal. It's war, warfare, Antichrist policies of destroying, trying to destroy the Jewish people. Jesus prophesied this in verses 6 and 7 of Matthew chapter 24. He says this, And ye shall hear of wars, and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. Jesus prophesied of the second seal. Jesus also prophesies of the third seal, famine. In verse number 7, And there shall be famines. Jesus prophesied of the third seal. And the fourth seal is death. That's where uh, it refers to pestilence. and People will be killed with the sword and with hunger and with the wild beasts of the earth. That's the pale horse. Uh, the fourth seal, Jesus prophesies of that. In verse number 7, there will be pestilences. Jesus prophesied of the fourth seal. And then notice the fifth seal. We refer to that as the tribulation martyrs. And Jesus prophesies of persecution in 
uh, Revel in Matthew chapter 24, specifically verse 9 and 10, it says this, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. Jesus prophesied of the fifth seal. And then Jesus prophesied also of the sixth seal. We won't read the verses we just read, uh, but all of these um, uh, natural disasters that are happening, the great quaking of heaven and earth, and the sun being darkened, the moon being turned to blood, and the stars falling to heaven, uh, from heaven to the earth. Notice in Matthew chapter 24, uh, Jesus prophesies of this in verse 29 and 30. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So it's interesting to see this a parallel between Revelation chapter 6 and Matthew chapter 24. Jesus prophesied of the sixth seal. And we look at the sixth seal in detail and see what is going to happen in the future. I just want to say this to encourage us this morning, or wherever, whenever you're watching this, wherever you are, is that all of this is meant to usher in Jesus Christ as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Our theme verse for the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 11 and verse 15, And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Jesus Christ will be exalted as the King of kings and Lord of lords. We can rejoice in that reality. And the fact is that this tribulation period, these six seals that we've looked at so far, um, believers, you and I, if you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you don't have to fear going through the tribulation. The church will be raptured out uh, beforehand. beforehand. Uh, but this is uh, very insightful to understand what the Bible says about what is going to happen on this earth to prepare for the coming of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is coming a second time. He came the first time, but he's coming again. And it's important that you and I be ready, but then also to share with others uh, even today, to be a light, to be salt and light, to share the good news of Jesus Christ, to spare mankind from the mass destruction that will happen in the end times. Well, Jesus Christ will come and he set up his kingdom on this earth. And so let's rejoice in that fact. In our next segment together, uh, we're going to look at, start un unfolding the seventh seal. And this is where we get into a lot more details in uh, the tribulation period. And so I hope you'll be able to join me next time. And thank you again for joining me today in our study in the book of Revelation.